Wow, my darn flip camera that I've used for the last eight years, I think, just died on me. I'm using my iPhone for this video, which actually probably probably has better video quality. I need to change my recording method somehow, but what I did yesterday was I spent probably a couple hours making this nice looking little bias pot attachment that's the same as this amp right here you can see and put it in my 59 over here simple right not so simple and that's what I I made this long 30 minute video on how to make this assembly and that's heat shrink tubing clear around the outside to hold it all together and it's a cermet pot and it works great in this amp right here but uh, I stuck it in this amp and I put my bias probe on there which is nice because you can play it as you adjust you can ad adjust the bias and then play it at the same time and listen to the different adjustments I I've hardly ever noticed much difference uh, between you know 30 and 40 millivolts in adjustment but uh, some people might be able to hear that you know the lower it's supposed to be cleaner the lower settings either way after all this I stuck this in there and I started playing it and I had it adjusted around 34 I think it was, you know the tubes weren't perfectly matched they were 31 34 and I'd play it and then I'd stop and let it idle and it'd be at 34 and I'd play it and stop just looking at it next thing I know the bias is at 37 at idle and I'm going well what's going on here so then I would adjust it down which this pot didn't seem to be it would work good for a while and then I would turn it I must have gotten to the end of the range or something I don't know but it wouldn't adjust there for a while and then sometimes it would so I figured it might be a bad pot but I sat there and goofed around with it for probably a couple of hours trying to figure out why it was uh, fluctuating and that's not good you know going from 34 to 37 I mean actually according to the bias charts uh, 37's over max or over 70 percent dissipation for the plates which is supposed to be around 76 at my let's say 449 volt plate voltage is what I was reading but uh so I kept messing with it. It kept fluctuating. And I said, eh. every time I'm every time I mess with this amp, simple things like changing a socket or something, it fights back and gives me a hard time. So I said, screw it, I'm putting the resistor back in. So I measured the resistor, it was at 61k. It's supposed to be 56k. You know, they've got 10% plus or minus drift. I think 61 is actually over 10. But, uh, so I found another 56K that I had that was about 59, so less resistance. I was trying to get the tubes a little hotter. Well, it turns out that made them a little bit too hot. They were running around 40 millivolts. So that's what I'm telling you. A, a difference between a 61K and a 59K resistor it could, you know, change your bias maybe 6 or 7 millivolts. So just get you a handful of uh, 56K resistors that are anywhere from 56 to 60 or maybe even lower, somewhere in that range. Uh, and it took took me five seconds. I took this out, put the resistor in there. I said, well, shoot, that's easy. Just take one resistor out. I took, put it in the 59. It was a little hot. I found another set of 5881s, old tongue saws. Put them in, they were perfect at 31, 34, something like that. Sounds great. Very clean, a lot of uh, high end. Sounds a little bit more like a Marshall to me now. But uh, that was it. I said it took me five seconds to put in another resistor, and I spent two hours on the pot. So if you don't want to mess with the pot, which can be unstable if you don't get a good one, I guess. Just change the resistors. Simple as that.
That's all you need to do. All right, I got to figure out what I'm going to do about this camera situation. I had a really cool demo I was going to do on a new box. I'll I'll put that up here in a little bit, but it's uh it's pretty cool. Talk to you guys later.